have the same goals, um, but it's to get the value from this program. Um, well, I, I'm going to speed up my presentation because we, we want to get to the to the, um, to the presenters here. But but as you know, uh, SNAP was um, its name was changed, emphasizes nutrition. Its motto is putting healthy food within reach. But unfortunately, healthy food is not necessarily purchased from the program. And so we see it as a really a missed opportunity to improve the nutrition of program participants and to prevent obesity. Um, the, some of the limitations in the program are that it doesn't really do that much to improve the retail environment to promote healthy food choices. There are no formal incentives, except for a pilot program, to purchase fruits and vegetables or other nutritious <coughs> foods like we've heard about today. Many of the, the members of Congress were talking about how those incentives are needed. There are a few restrictions on, on what foods can be purchased, and importantly, it doesn't collect data on what participants are purchasing, what foods they're purchasing, and it's not made public where uh, the venues are where they are buying these, the foods. Um, and it provides really no consumer feedback in real time about what you're buying to help you align your purchases with the dietary guidelines. The individual faces a lot of barriers. The costs of fruits and vegetables have increased compared to processed foods, there are often a lack of nearby retailers, the food deserts that exist, marketing of unhealthy foods to program participants. Uh, it's hard to count the billions of dollars in food advertising. There's often a lack of time among our low-income participants to plan meals and shop, limited cooking, and food preparation skills. And the food industry and other corporate interests have pushed back on SNAP program changes for many, many years. You take those individual problems and you put onto it the macro forces that are working, whether it's media influences, marketing, uh, the subsidies that we heard about for <coughs> corn and soy, um, the lack of, of government action to make this a stronger program in the past. So what we're here today and what we're going to hear from our experts and our projects team is really how can we create a, road, a roadmap, a, a way forward, a path forward for promoting healthy nutrition and importantly for preventing obesity uh, among SNAP participants. And that will align the program with uh, federal nutrition spending with long-term public health and economic benefits for our country. Now, it can be done. Um, in 2009, the WIC program, the Women, Infants, and Children's program, created a, a defined package to align with the dietary guidelines. And then in February of 2010, uh, the White House, President Obama, he announced a task force that would mobilize all agencies of government to put their skills and their resources together to fight obesity because this had become a national public health problem that was breaking the back of businesses, robbing people of good health, and threatening our national security, as you heard about. So um, what came out of that was also the Let's Move campaign uh, that has been championed by uh, Michelle Obama, as well as the hunger uh, the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act of 2010, which then aligned the National School Meal Program with the, the dietary guidelines for, for uh, three, 30 million children. And then we've seen some uh, improvements in SNAP and guidance that will go into effect in 2013. So we're here during the Farm Bill Reauthorization. We, we know that we're now shining a spotlight on this program, and we're looking at opportunities that could be harnessed now to improve the health of participants right now, but also into the future. We begin that dialogue, all of us, about how to strengthen SNAP. That's what this project was all about. Um, bringing together a team of top nutrition and public health experts to um, look at the science, to provide recommendations about how to move SNAP towards health. We prepared a scientific literature review. We conducted key informant interviews. We did, uh, did a stakeholder survey of over 500 people from diverse groups, public health, agriculture, private industry, the media. And we launched an interactive website that we hope that you'll visit at www.snaphealth.org. What I wanted you to now is just to pre present to you the 10 key recommendations that came out of this. You have them in your, in your um, pamphlets. And we hope that they will be stirred into the, the, the dialogue that is going on now here in the Hill and in the years ahead about how to strengthen the SNAP. The first one is, as you've heard um, Congresswoman DeLauro, Senator Wyden, Chambliss talk, we need, to, we need to protect and preserve funding from this critical safety net that, that's enrolled one out of seven people during this current economic recession, 50% of whom are children. 
we need to collect data on SNAP purchases, as I mentioned before, um, real-time data, be identified, provide consumer feedback, and to be an important research tool and to improve the effectiveness and the efficiency and the transparency of this program, like, for example, is done in other large federal programs such as Medicaid and Medicare. We need to align SNAP purchase with the dietary guidelines. And as I said, this has been done with our other federal food assistance programs. Now let's work together to see how we can move SNAP in this direction. And, and the uh, report identifies a number of transformational improvements in the program that can lead us uh, towards this path. We need to focus in on SNAP as a children's health program. And we have Dr. Ludwig here today, a foremost a pediatrician and nutrition expert who will be, be really telling us why this is so critical. But think about this. Half of SNAP participants are children. Consider this. 50% of children in America by the age of 19 will be enrolled in SNAP. So this is a tremendous missed opportunity not to provide them with the nutritional quality that they need to grow, to learn, to develop, and to have a healthier future. After all, children are 28% of our nation's population. They are 100% of our nation's future. So we need to strengthen SNAP for them. Five, we need to use incentives to make uh, fruits and veggies and whole grains the e easy choice. And we'll be hearing more about um, the possibilities for that. We need to stra strengthen stock, uh, stocking standards for SNAP retailers. Um, to be certified as a SNAP retailer, you should be have to have a certain uh, quality of foods and a number of foods uh, for certification. We need to provide states and municipalities with more flexibility to test some of the fresh approaches that, we're, that are in our report and that we'll hear about today. We need to promote innovation in SNAP. There should be a center for health and nutrition innovation that supports pilot projects, that really has as its mission healthy nutrition, and that we bring more public health expertise into the program. We need to create a partnership between USDA and the Department of Health and Human Services. And yes, some activity is going on with the CDC, but we need to really make that a partnership like is done for the dietary guidelines for Americans to ensure that public health is there at the table and, uh, and that it is infused into the program for the future. And, and lastly, we need a national strategy to, to strengthen SNAP, to identify a number of action steps to stimulate research, policy change, technological innovation, including the use of social media, uh, and program evaluation for the future. So the bottom line is we have these dual public health crises, obesity and food insecurity among SNAP participants, um, and we need to uh, really find a way of strengthening SNAP. It will yield other important uh, benefits, such as strengthening our economy, increasing worker productivity, promoting a scholastic achievement among uh, kids, and uh, many more uh, issues. So it's an opportunity. SNAP provides an important opportunity to improve the health and nutrition of 42 million beneficiaries, 50% of whom are children. And as President Roosevelt said to conclude, the true test of our progress as a nation is not whether we add more to the abundance of those who have much. It is whether we provide enough for those who have too little. So together, I think, and what this briefing underscores, each one of us has a role to play to strengthen SNAP to ensure a healthier future for people uh, in our country. And um, please visit snaptohealth.org to continue the dialogue uh, after this briefing today.